Um, so I'm here to talk about the, the open access uh, research uh, program or model at uh, SGC. Some of you may not know what, what SGC is about, so I'm going to start with the, um, an, uh, an introduction. Um, we have a lab based in Oxford. Some of you have already mentioned um, uh, the Oxford SGC lab this morning. We have one based in Toronto as well. Uh, we are funded by a, a number of Canadian government agencies, the Wellcome Trust, and uh, uh, an, in, an increasingly long list of, um, uh, of uh, pharmaceutical companies as well. Uh, we do structural biology, chemical biology. Uh, some of that work goes towards uh, target validation and discovery. Um, we, we are very heavily engaged in protein targets uh, uh, that are um, involved in epigenetic mechanisms. Uh, in, uh, pro protein kinases are definitely a strength for us, membrane proteins and parasitology. Uh, over a, uh, a period of 10 years, we have put over 1,500 protein structures uh, in the PDB. I believe roughly uh, over 1,200 are unique uh, 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 first ever uh, uh, protein structures. Uh, uh, my colleagues have um, produced uh, 18 uh, uh, epigenetic chemical probes. Now that sounds like a very small number compared to the uh, number of structures. However, the criteria for what uh, we define as a chemical probe are very stringent. And uh, uh, there are pharma partners, some of which are represented here, uh, I think uh, uh, will tell you that uh, these are high quality chemical probes which are completely made available on demand. There's a, there's a, uh, a web page on our website that you can go to and, all, and there's a contact information and you can just simply ask us for the entire set of our chemical probes. Uh, in fact, our chemical probes program have been so successful that there are actually uh, 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 chemical companies out there marketing the SGC probe set. Uh, but I recommend that you come to our website every so often. You'll find that uh, maybe once every two months there'll be a new probe molecule added to it uh, and you will find all the information about the, the, the probe molecules um, on the website as, as well. Uh, a few years ago, um, our um, director, uh, Alan Edwards, um, uh, published a, a paper in, I think it's Nature, uh, Chemical, uh, Nature Structural and, and uh, Molecular Biology, and the, um, the, the, the title of the paper was uh, Primitive Principles Meet Structural Biology. Uh, he was basically describing the fact that uh, one of our guiding principles is we put the structure in the PDB as soon as we solve the structure. Now obviously there, there are validations and various other steps involved, but one thing we don't do, which is a common practice, is with, uh, hold the structure uh, from the public domain or withhold it from the public domain until we publish a paper. Now that puts us, the scientists, at a disadvantage, but it's something that we, we believe uh, can be very helpful to, uh, to others. Uh, not only do we put the structure in the public domain, we disseminate the methods and materials on our website. Uh, we fall behind because we, uh, 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 once in a while, because we produce uh, structures at a very fast rate. But for most of our structures, if not all of them, um, you can find exactly how to reproduce it uh, on our website. If you find anyone that's missing, uh, let me know or let any one of my colleagues know. It is our, uh, uh, it is our intention not to mislead. Now, as you know, um, uh, protein crystallization uh, uh, more than any other, uh, or more than most uh, scientific methods, it's very difficult to reproduce. Uh, we, we moved across the streets uh, in Toronto roughly five years ago, and, and two of the proteins that we, I was working on that wouldn't even give me the tiniest bit of crystal on one side of the street gave me instant, without any optimization, uh, better than two angstrom crystals uh, uh, when we went to the, to the, uh, the south side of College Street. So that tells you something about uh, the, the, uh, the art versus the science of, of protein crystallization. Um, so, so, but yet, you know, when it comes to how to make the protein uh, and, and how we crystallized it, uh, you know, the, the, uh, all the details should be there. Uh, we will share anything we can with you. You ask us for, for DNA. Um, usually our guiding principle is we'll give you DNA for, for proteins that we have solved structures of, but to be honest with you, it, uh, if you need DNA and I have got it, I've never, uh, I've never said no to sending it out to anyone. Uh, we, we will give you proteins uh, if you're willing to wait for us to reproduce it or if we happen to have it in the freezer. Uh, we'll give you our, um, uh, that the cell lines that we use to, uh, uh, to, to express some of our proteins. Over the years, uh, we have actually 
uh, develops our own um, uh, uh, customized uh, E. coli cell line that seems to produce um, uh, more uh, or express more plasmodium proteins uh, than, than the standard uh, BL21. Some of you may recall uh, over 10 years ago, it was deemed nearly impossible to use uh, E. coli to express uh, proteins. Still very challenging, uh, but I would say roughly 25% uh, of the time, 20-25% of the proteins we've tried, we've succeeded. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, the, the, we, dis uh, we distribute uh, uh, chemical probes. I'm referring to the human like the probes for human uh, uh, proteins. We don't have an official uh, chemical probes program for the parasitology uh, program yet. And of course, we publish uh, um, uh, papers. Um, now, so that's the theory. That's how we, we aspire to, uh, to, to, to sharing uh, our work. Uh, in practice, uh, so this is what gets interesting. So you, as you may recall, I mentioned that we have a, a, a fairly long list of pharmaceutical companies uh, uh, funding our research, working with us. So why would they work with us if we share everything possible? Uh, so there are certain boundaries which protect their interests. Well, first and foremost, of course, is we work in the early stage of pre-competitive research, so to some extent pre-pre-competitive. So that, I think, protects them. Uh, second of all, each pharma uh, partner uh, submits a target list, but they don't see each other's target list. Uh, and we, as, as scientists working at SGC, we don't know if a particular target was proposed by GSK, Novartis, or Pfizer. Uh, but when the structure is solved, everybody benefits from it. Um, and, and, and compound libraries sometimes are provided by the farmers, are, are kept confidential. In, in other words, one company doesn't know what compounds that the other one has sent to us. Uh, in some cases, we don't even know what the compounds are, and, and we, we basically sign off on the fact that we will not make any effort to find out. Uh, those compounds, however, will not be used in co-crystallization, because uh, if you work with us, any structure we solve goes in the PDB, no exception. That's one key guiding principle. Uh, and so there are cases where if you tell me ahead of time, hey, you know, we like you to to uh, screen or assay a certain compound against a protein you've purified, but please, please don't crystallize it. Uh, use of in crystallization, we won't. We will respect that. Uh, we want to work with people as much as possible, uh, but our strongest guiding principle is the structure belongs to the public because we we are funded heavily by the public. Okay, um, and however. Uh, Sometimes open access for, uh, for, for scientists who need publication uh, can be, a, uh, um, I wouldn't say a detriment, but can, can have some uh, uh, drawbacks. Um, and so occasionally, I'll start the bottom up, uh, we've been scooped. Uh, we put the structure in, in the PDB, uh, we work really hard in publication, and suddenly we find out, uh, and of course Murphy's Law says, just as we think we're ready to submit, somebody publishes a paper. And one of the, the, the uh, frustrating things about that is someone can take your structure in the PDB, refer to it, draw very nice figures to it, but not mention anything about the statistics, and the reviewers have never critiqued the structure. You put your own structure in your paper, you're obligated to cite all the statistics, and there's usually at least one reviewer uh, who, who finds something wrong with, with, uh, with how you've, you have, you've done the modeling, and you spend six months arguing, refining the structure. Uh, so in, in, in other words, sometimes it's easier for somebody else to, uh, to publish uh, our structure than it is for us. Uh, but that's part, uh, part of the price we pay uh, uh, for, uh, for doing our research, and it's a very small price because, as I mentioned, uh, it's very, it, this happens very occasionally. Uh, we do run into other issues when we try to move forward uh, with collaborations. Uh, someone mentioned before universities, uh, can, uh, the, the, the uh, patent office uh, uh, can be a bit of, 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 a, um, uh, of a hindrance. Well, this, the same folks also work on MTAs as well, uh, and, and they, they're very picky. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I say that, uh, uh, acknowledging that the, uh, at University of Toronto, so sometimes the delays at my end, University of Toronto can be picky as well. Uh, and I, I would tell you, uh, with, with all honesty, that uh, pharmaceutical companies have never been a problem when it comes to MTA because they, they're consistent, uh, they work efficiently, uh, and, and you know, so, so, um, so really that, that, that's, that may be contrary to uh, what, what people perceive. Um, we, we understand and appreciate that whether uh, our partners, our uh, collaborators are from industry uh, or from, uh, from, uh, from academia, there is interest and sometimes an obligation and a need to, uh, uh, to path, file for patents. So that, that does create a bit of an issue. Uh, but they, I don't think there's been one, inst, uh, one, uh, one instance where it is important to work together uh, that has been showstopper. Sometimes uh, we get into long lasting discussions, but we eventually we work, uh, we work around that. 
So now I want to just zoom in a, a, a little bit more on uh, to what my team does, uh, which is what I refer to as structural and chemical parasitology. And um, so this is one of the few times that I talk about my program without really uh, getting into a uh, structure. Um, uh, so we basically do the same thing as my colleagues do who are working on the human proteins. We, we make the protein, we, we use either E. coli or insect cells to produce the protein, and uh, we, 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 we try to crystallize it, we screen the protein against compounds. Uh, the idea is to help, um, uh, to enable collaborators and others uh, who are actually working on, on uh, anti-parasitic drug discovery or working on functional research. They may be interested in, uh, uh, in, in what, what a protein does. Uh, this, is, uh, this work is carried out in, in, uh, in, in, um, uh, in the University of Toronto. I won't go through the, uh, the, uh, the list of diseases and, and, and um, parasites here because uh, in this audience, I don't think uh, you need to uh, do more than just uh, have a quick glance at it. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the accomplishments. A lot of it is just basically, um, uh, uh, um, uh, as some people say, uh, stamp uh, collection. But one thing I want to um, uh, uh, mention is uh, two things I'm proud of, I should say. Uh, one is, uh, I've underlined here, the methods and materials, I'm repeating myself here, they're published on our website. Uh, and uh, I believe it has helped people tremendously. Um, sometimes the hardest thing is to convince people, yes, it's all there. I'm not lying when I'm telling you I'm using the cell lines. Some people don't believe how simple our methods are, but I believe simplicity is the reason why we have succeeded um, uh, in, in many cases. And then the second thing that I'm really proud of is the bottom line here. I don't know how, if you can all see with the microphones here. Basically, uh, our work has generated enough interest that on a weekly basis, we're sending out DNA proteins and in some cases compounds to, uh, to people who are interested. Um, as I mentioned before, our initial guideline, our, our, our um, guiding principle is to send DNA out when um, we solve a structure, but uh, the demand has grown such that if I have it, uh, we've cloned it, uh, you know, it's yours for the, for the asking. We actually have an official program, uh, our official partner for distribution of DNA, uh, because you, you, we have to sign this over to add gene every time we have a new set. Uh, so I've just resorted to if people ask me, uh, I will arrange for you to have the DNA. Some, if, you, you know, if sometimes there's a delay, uh, um, please keep bugging me because uh, the demand is, is uh, sometimes uh, um, uh, uh, quite frequent. Uh, but it's, some, uh, it's something that we, we, we don't want to stop doing. Uh, I think very soon we'll find a way to maybe turn this over to MR4 or, or a similar type of organization to, uh, uh, to make this easier for us. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit deep, um, a little bit, bit more deeply into parasite protein kinases. Now, uh, hopefully, it'll, uh, it'll be evidence why uh, it's a good uh, exemplar of what open access uh, research can do. Um, as it was just mentioned in the last presentation, um, uh, MMV funded um, uh, um, uh, this, uh, or oversaw or funded the, um, uh, the screening of, uh, I didn't even know, 6 million plus compounds against plasmodium, uh, o uh, over 25,000 hits, correct, yeah, I, my number, I guess is incorrect, it's over 25,000 uh, hits, I believe there are now two clinical candidates uh, with more coming, and we heard, uh, I guess, the introduction uh, of, of, a, uh, of a new uh, preclinical candidate this morning from, uh, from, from Dundee, uh, so this has been a very successful program. Uh, so um, I, I think Paul also mentioned, well, you know, uh, why, why, why didn't people take advantage of all the published information immediately? Well, the number is quite, uh, I think, bewildering. You know, if you look at the fact that the Plasmodium genome has over 5,000 genes, uh, we're talking about now 25,000 compounds, the, uh, the, the, the number of possible uh, 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 permutations you can work with uh, is just beyond anyone's capability. So we all based on our background and interests, find ways to, to narrow down that, that search space. Uh, so uh, um, MMV has used uh, uh, chemi informatics and, and I guess chemistry expertise to narrow it down to 400 compounds. And, and that's a great program. Uh, and we will soon provide uh, feedback and, and hopefully publish uh, what we've done with that, uh, those 400 compounds. Uh, we've also, um, or the, another way is based on what your interest, what, what enzymes or proteins you're interested in, you can narrow it down to, 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 your, um, uh, to, to your specific pathway of interest, for example. That's not guaranteed to lead you to an essential druggable pathway. 
pathway, but that's another way to, to narrow things down. Uh, so we try to look at it from a rational perspective. Uh, roughly around the same time, or maybe shortly after the paper, uh, the papers on, on, on phenotypic screening started coming out, uh, there was a paper in Nature on the plasmodium kinome, uh, listing um, uh, basically the finding, or uh, listing the uh, close to 40% uh, or so of the plasmodium kinome being essential, uh, and, and two others essential in transmission. And uh, in addition, uh, there was a breakdown in one of the papers, in, uh, particularly the paper uh, uh, with the uh, uh, about the, um, uh, the 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 screen that my GSK, uh, where of all the hits that they that they published, uh, roughly one third of them are putative kinase uh, inhibitors, um, and we at SGC has a, uh, we have a very very strong human protein kinase program. Uh, so, and, and at, at that time, we were fairly interested in parasite protein kinases already. We already started working on it. Uh, when we saw that it's basically uh, these, two, uh, uh, these two publications, we, we just thought, you know what, we're just going to redouble our efforts here because it makes sense. Uh, because suddenly, you're narrowing down that source space uh, from 5,300 times 20,000 uh, 20, or 25,000 to roughly 40 by 5,000. Still very large uh, search space, but sub substantially reduced. Um, so how are we tackling the um, uh, uh, parasite kinases? Well, first of all, now that we narrowed down the search space, we expanded it again because we're not just interested in, 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 uh, in malaria kinase or plasmodium kinases. Uh, you know, without question, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, you know uh, the, the true neg neglected diseases do not benefit from nearly the amount of, or even uh, I, I would say proportional amount of, of funding. So one way to, to, to try and I think uh, sort of tilt the table back a little bit the other way is to take research done in plasmodium and translate it to other uh, uh, diseases. Uh, so we, every time we think of working on plasmodium kinases, we try to work on uh, orthologous uh, uh, kinases in, 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 um, in, in cryptosporidium and toxoplasma. And we're also interested in trypanosoma and, and leishmanian kinases as well. So essentially, we try to go after expression purification of these kinases. When we screen the malaria box we, and, uh, um, uh, and, and other kinase inhibitors we can get our hands on, but I want to specifically mention the kinase inhibitors from GSK. Some of you may have heard of the uh, uh, the PKIS, the, the, uh, the published protein kinase inhibitor sets um, of, uh, that's been released by GSK, I think starting about two years ago. Uh, we also got um, Novartis and Roche to share with us uh, some, some rep representative compounds from their kinase libraries. Uh, so suddenly now, you know, uh, you know, we went to some some rational steps of went through some rational steps of narrowing down search space. But once we we did that, we tried to expand it again so that um, uh, we we can take advantage of the, the uh, what what I would call medium through uh, throughput screen capacity that we, we have. Uh, I want to emphasize the P, uh, the PKIS uh, GS case. Uh, PKIS uh, a compound set here. Uh, you can find that uh, uh, in, uh, in, in Campbell. You can find it in PubChem. Um, you can also contact, uh, um, in particular, Bill Zerker and uh, Dave Drury at, at, at GSK uh, in, in, uh, in North Carolina, and they will uh, send you compounds uh, 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 that PKIS set uh, once you explain to them what research um, you're, you're interested in. So in other words, uh, sort of same type of approach that MMV is taking with the malaria box and I guess uh, soon the uh, pathogen box. And, and what GSK's interest is that they want to generate as much data on these, ki uh, these compounds as possible. Um, so whether you're working on, on uh, uh, human uh, protein kinases, uh, are you working on parasite kinases, uh, they're interested in supporting you in, in that research and also getting the data back so that they can really uh, uh, broaden their understanding of, of, of kinase uh, 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 selectivity, uh, which has turned out to be a much harder problem, I think, than anyone um, anticipated. Um, even though uh, we're working on uh, multiple kinomes, I, want, I, I always like to come back to this plasmodium kinome uh, tree, uh, kinase tree, uh, as sort of as a reference. And also, I think in the context of this conference here, it makes sense because um, um, if you know Oliver Bilker uh, as Sanger, he actually uh, gives out this uh, tree which he drew, I think, in PowerPoint by hand because uh, he didn't like the way the software generated the actual tree. Uh, he shares it with people on demand and, and people sort of, uh, sort of tweak the tree to represent what they want to. So I call this the open source uh, uh, kinome tree. 
Um, and, and some of you who work on kinase will, know, will, will remember that the human kinome tree also uh, has been similarly uh, well used as well. So this, uh, these uh, uh, circles here represent the, structure, uh, the kinase for which you have structures. I won't go into that too much. Uh, I, I also want to mention we, uh, there are three Lashmania map K structures as well, two of which we solved. Um, just a little bit of showing off, a little bit of stamp, uh, stamp uh, collection uh, stuff. Um, these are some a subset of our kind of structures. Uh, so quickly to the wrap up. Um, so this started with uh, sort of to give you one perspective. MMV uh, and partners uh, dumped a whole lot of data uh, made available for anyone who's interested in, in um, and they, they'd help us uh, drill down by narrowing down that very large um, uh, chemical space to 400 compounds. Roughly the same time, uh, it may, may be uh, um, uh, uh, just as a coincidence that GSK released a PKIS. Uh, Novartis and Roche follow up with their set of compounds, uh, kinase inhibitors that they're willing to, uh, to share. And that's sort of, I think, uh, everything sort of coalesced just right in terms of timing to allow us to, um, uh, to, to, to I think, really broaden our research on, on uh, parasite kinases. We, uh, we found nan nanomolar hits without doing any chemistry against these targets. Um, we'll be publishing that data very shortly. Um, and uh, we like to think that we're giving back uh, by putting uh, data uh, in public domain as soon as we, we get it, at least the structures, uh, as I mentioned before, by sharing reagents. Um, we, we also like to think we're giving back by repurposing some of uh, the, the, the research um, uh, that uh, we're doing in plasmodium into other uh, protozoan parasite kinases as well. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll wrap up here. <laughs>